but I was gonna I was gonna tell a story about this one guitar. <coughs> um, when I was when I was uh, in my you know first stages of uh, learning how to play, uh, there was this live Aerosmith record called Live Bootleg. Oh yeah, one of the best live records I love ever. That record, yeah. man. And in the in the fold out, this is back when they had vinyl, right? Um, in the fold out, there was a, a couple pictures of Joe with this t uh, tobacco sunburst. Uh, Les Paul. So instead of the regular sort of red, yellow, cherry thing, it was more of a black to brown, sort of a puke yellow kind of deal. And uh, I thought that was the coolest, you know, in my sort of discovering Les Paul period, that was the coolest guitar I'd ever seen. So years and years later, um, I got this, I was in Japan and I got this phone call saying that uh, there's some guy trying to sell this guitar that I might be interested in. And it was a, a, a tobacco, 59 tobacco Les Paul. And uh, it was owned by Dwayne, Dwayne Allman and then Joe Perry. Right? So I was like, get out of here. So I said, send me, send me uh, the photos. And uh, we were on tour in Japan. So when I got back to LA, I went to my apartment. And there was this envelope you know, from whoever. I don't know who it was. I just opened it up sort of nonchalantly. And out came these, these uh, you know, well, you got three by fives of, of this guitar, and I, you recognize the guitar because it had, like, this was worn off right here, and then there was a, a scratch underneath the pickguard mm -hmm. right here, and a scratch right here, and a couple of recognizable things from hours of studying these pictures. I knew exactly <laughs> what this guitar looked like, <clears throat> and uh, I bought the guitar for eight grand. So nobody knew exactly what the value of these things were. So I, I bought the guitar, and it. Uh, showed up at my apartment, <laughs> and it, there it was. And this is a '59 that's been played by all these great guys, and so it was very. It was sort of a coveted thing for me. You know, I didn't really touch <coughs> it too much until you know a few years later, and I went into the studio and and uh, was making a record, and I pulled this thing out, which is what happens with vintage guitars. You tend to tuck them away because they yeah. are that. Right. Anyway, and I pulled this thing out, and uh, and it sounded it sounded really good, but it didn't sound like you know like anything you'd want to necessarily call, you know, write home about or anything like that. So I, I recorded uh, one song with it and uh, shot one video with it. And then years and years went by. And then I finally I gave it back to Joe for his birthday nice. five years ago. So that's like, there's a, a guitar that's got some history and has made some amazing sounds, but right. didn't necessarily, it, you know, it, it was like, it's a good guitar, but it didn't speak to me in the way that my own guitar did, you know? It wasn't sure. worth having to, uh. to, to keep it around for the sake of keeping it around, you know? And it was too valuable and too, had too much history to start beating it up like I, was, I had done my own guitar. So it was just gonna be collecting dust and only getting picked out for those special moments, which I don't think a, a good guitar should be used for. Yeah. Must have been happy. He was very happy. He was that's very cool, happy. man. Yeah. That's a great story. He was like, that's the only thing I have from that period that, you know, so it was, it was cool to give back to him.